when you've been married as long as we have. Routine is part of the relationship. There's the waking up, the working out, the coffee making, the getting ready, the real job, the coming home, the making dinner, the watching TV, the parting of ways, the other job, ending the day. It's the routine. And it becomes easy to avoid issues for the sake of keeping the peace. For the sake of the routine. Until the routine gets out of hand. And takes the relationship with it. Welcome back to The Midnight Fried. My name is Chris. And I'm Catherine. If you tuned in today expecting another Las Vegas video or another barbecue video or another cooking video, then uh, this is probably a little bit different for you. And this is the part where we get into the life section of The Midnight Fried. Uh, we thought this was a really important topic to cover because I know it became important to us last year. Don't panic. There was no huge issue, but sometimes little issues can build resentment over time. And so we find that it's important when little issues start building and we stop being able to communicate effectively to seek out some help, whether it's self-help, you know, getting a book, reading a book together, or going to counseling. Counseling isn't just for the big problem. Sometimes just getting a new perspective on an old issue helps you work it out. And that's what we did. We sought out a counselor last year. Now I know most of us probably uh, faced some challenges last year, especially those of us who are in relationships uh, and living together, I think faced them really unique challenges last year and continue to do so. You know, being home all the time together, just completely different and that's not what we're used to. Catherine works from an office, I work from home, so when we were both suddenly thrown into working at home together, it was a little bit different. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while and really not just ours, but if you watch any channel, you are getting the edited version. We don't get along all the time. That happens and that's okay. That's important to know. Relationships, no matter how long you've been in one or how new it is, they take work. In the beginning, everything seems perfect and you know, the little things really are adorable and they don't get on your nerves. And then years down the road, you're like, what was I thinking? Oh my God. The thing that I have realized over the years, I think that I have found most important is that number one, to still work through the little issues before they snowball into bigger ones. And number two, don't take each other for granted. Like the little things that you each do for each other every day. It doesn't matter if Chris has washed the dishes a hundred times. I, I will tell him thank you because I genuinely appreciate it every single time he does it because I don't have to do it when he does it. Now, like we said, we did seek out a counselor last year. We definitely don't want you to have the impression that counselors are the end all be all answer to everything. Um, because they aren't. And if you do seek one out, you need to find one who's the right fit for you because occasionally that happens <laughs> that uh, they don't necessarily gel with you. What I would say is that the most important part of this is that both of you are open to getting that help. What you do with it after that is really up to you. Like we said, you have to put the work in to make it work, but it's really being open to getting that help. We met with the counselor over a period of about a month. So around four different sessions, I think. Yeah. And one of the things he prescribed at the end of our time together was a book called The Five 
love languages. So the book says there are five different love languages. The first one is words of affirmation. The second love language is quality time. Third is receiving gifts. The fourth is acts of service. And last is physical touch. Now, one of the things I would say about that list, in a way, I think everyone speaks those languages at different points. I think it's really identifying which one your partner identifies with and responds to the most. I really liked the book. I thought there were some very useful tips in it. And I mean, this might not be a very popular opinion, not only like the book was suggesting to learn the love language of your partner so that you can show them love in a language they understand. I feel like even as important as that is learning to understand the language that your partner is speaking in, even if it's not your personal love language. Like I know that when Chris washes the dishes, he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't like to do it. And he knows that if he leaves it, I will eventually do it. So I know that when he does, he's showing me love. And I know that Catherine absolutely does not respond to gifts. In fact, they can cause a problem. They make her super uncomfortable. She does not like being the recipient of any kind of gift, really. So I know that's not her love language. So I absolutely avoid that until I don't <laughs> when I actually want to do something for her. I also think it's important if you do a little research on these love languages, not to always think, well, I would rather this than that. For instance, okay, acts of service, not super important, I, I appreciate it. Maybe I would like Chris to tell me that I'm pretty more often, or that he loves me more than three times a day. But if you really think about what your life would be like in the absence of the thing they're already doing, you might find that you wouldn't really rather if you recognize that what they're doing is showing love. And we will put a link to this book in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. But even the author admits in the book that learning to listen to your partner is more important than the actual language itself. That serves you well in any aspect of your life. Learning to listen at work, learning to listen at home, but learning to listen to what other people are actually saying is way more important than the language they're actually responding to and speaking in themselves. No matter what language your partner is trying to speak love to you in, if it's love, accept it. So to reiterate for anyone who kind of freaked out a little bit when they saw this, <laughs> when they saw this video pop up in their uh, notifications, we're okay. And we promise we are. What we mostly wanted to say is it's also okay for you to seek some help in communicating with your partner and in, encourage you to do so if you need it because uh, you know we want you all to be happy too. Keep in mind, Chris was saying earlier that counselors are not magic. They don't have the answers. And I think a common misconception is that counselors are supposed to tell you what to do and they're not. They don't do that. That isn't their job. They're there to get you talking and to get you thinking so that you can arrive at a resolution on your own. They may let you arrive at the wrong resolution and you'll just have to keep trying them out when you arrive at new ones, but that's all they're there for. They don't have answers. Their lives are no more together than ours. They just have researched in school the tools that we need to get past little bumps in the road. I think by sharing our experience, we are hoping that people don't cringe when they think we need help. There's something that we can't do ourselves. There's nothing wrong with counseling. Counseling isn't just for major problems. Counseling isn't just for mental illness. It's, it's for anything. So you are only going to get out of counseling what you put in. So if you're both committed to making it work and you're both committed to changing any aspect of your relationship or improving it, then chances are you're gonna come out better than you went in. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell so that you know every time we release a new video. And those are the free ways to support the channel. If you're looking for some extra ways to support the channel, be sure to check out our Patreon page where you can become an official 
Midlife Rider. And be sure to check out our lifestyle shop at midliferide.bigcartel.com. So best of luck wherever you happen to be, best of luck in all of your relationships, and we will see you on the next episode of The Midlife Ride. Mm -hmm.